over to Mark Eastlick, who manages our um, sightings pages for us very kindly um, over the border in Cumbria. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, so, so yeah. So, what what I thought we we could do uh, today is is have a have a sort of overview of the sightings page for those who aren't already familiar with it, um, and then we can also have a look at some of the uh, data visualizations that we have. So, um, these allow us to. Uh, query historic sightings and look for trends and generally, you know, view the data in a, in a more expressive way than just having the sightings in a, in a table. So um, I'll share my screen. Um, so, okay. Um, so this is the, the Lancashire branch uh, in your in your area page. So if we go down, um, we can either look at the latest sightings or we can report a new sighting. So if we click to report a new sighting, um, we can we can enter you know personal information like name and email telephone number um then for the actual sighting we have site and town and grid reference so with the with the interactive map we can we can drag uh drag the the marker to where where we where we saw the sighting that updates the grid reference here um we can choose the species um life stage and we can we can also upload an image as well if we have one um so once the sightings information has been filled in we can hit the submit sighting uh button and um optionally the user can uh choose to generate a, an automatic social media post um so for for lancashire um that would be on twitter um there are other branches that use the the sightings page system so cumbria and, and uh, yorkshire as well so with cumbria um that would be a, a facebook post and uh, and a twitter uh post as well um so yeah so after we we submit sighting then it will appear it automatically appear in the um sightings table so so what we can see here is um uh the sightings for november so we've got a few but it 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 really does obviously tail off outside the um the main butterfly season so um with the uh with the sightings page we can i mean let me let me we we can look at well we can look at any any month um since the the page started in 2015 but let's let's have a look at august because we'll have or, or let's do july um so if we choose july 21 and click update so this is the the sightings we have for july and obviously we've got we've got many more um but we can we can choose to look at the images uh, so if we choose images and then click update that's strange let me try that again um all right don't know some some glitch there sorry about that um yeah so so here uh, here are the uh the images that we had in july um so you know gatekeeper at grassendale um and so on uh, so let's put that back to table then there is um uh the advanced or so-called advanced mode where we can um we can match uh sightings to you know particular species or particular towns um so if we go to species and choose purple hair streak click update then that's going to give us all of the purple hair streak sightings in in july that we that we received um you, you can you know additionally specify a town so you know silver there's purple hair something strange going on with this i need to 
need to work out what's going on anyway. Um, so, all right, so we have one, one purple hair streak sighting in, in Silverdale. So if we put those back, we can get all the sightings back. Then um, we can also search by uh, things like location. So if I, this is a grid reference for Lancashire. Um, so let's, let's look for uh, 10 kilometers from uh, Lancaster and that's these are the sightings we received and we can also specify uh corners of a of a rectangle by grid references as well and that will give us all of the uh sightings within um within that region so uh yeah one other thing when we submit a sighting we we automatically calculate the uh vice county um so this is this is useful for uh, recording purposes. Oops, sorry, what have I done? Uh, pull that back to. Um, yeah, so the, these are actually all South Lancashire. This is November. Um, so 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 yeah. So that's that's basically the the recording and the uh, basic display of sightings. So um, one of the positive things is that the the sightings page doesn't need any ongoing uh, sort of you know support uh, because the when the sightings are submitted, um, they they appear automatically in the in the table without needing to sort of upload data or, 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 or intervene in some, some other way. Um, we also have a, a first sightings page. So this lists the date of uh, the, the, the first date that, a, that each of the species was seen in, in, in a particular year. Um, so in in reverse chronological order we also have it for moths as well um so we can choose any any sort of previous year quick update um and uh, yeah these will be the, the the first sightings for for that year um one one thing i didn't mention is uh the 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 sightings table has um grid references as links so if we click a grid reference then this opens up a map um showing us exactly where the uh the sighting was seen um and also if we if we click on the species we get a uh, a flight times uh, histogram uh for that particular species um so so yeah which which leads us on to the um the visualizations so um if we click this uh show data visualizations link then um this gives us a little gallery of um the the different visualizations we have so i can quickly go over um some of these just to just to explain them in a bit more detail. So if we click the first one, um, this is showing uh, the number of annual sightings since the sightings page started in 2015. So um, you, can, you can see that we've actually had slightly fewer in the last year or two. Um, I guess that could be for many reasons, not least sort of COVID, um, but, you know, we're, 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 we receive over, you know, consistently over 2000 sightings, sightings a year. So each of these visualizations has different, um, uh, different options. So for example, we can look at uh, the number of sightings for individual species. So if I click comma here, so we can see, uh, yeah, the last couple of years we have we've had fewer comma sightings but that that probably may be a, a result of overall fewer sightings but if we click the percent um uh checkbox this is 
the the percentage of the overall number of sightings which were commas so we can see that there's a slight decline in the in the proportion of comma sightings i mean if we choose another species um so this is for for uh, peacocks so so again we're, we're seeing slightly fewer um peacock sightings so um yeah if we go back to the visualization gallery so this is showing us the uh cumulative sighting number of sightings over the whole year so you know we we start with very few in the in the first few months of the year and then uh, more rapidly climb and then tail off as the as the season ends um so if we click comma here so um this is this this is this is showing that we it looks like there's two broods for commas so between sort of mid april and mid june we we received almost no additional sightings and then it started to climb again after that um so let's go back to here um so so this visualization shows us the the trend of the numbers of particular species so this this isn't showing us very much over the last four weeks because we haven't had so many sightings but if we go back to sometime in july um we've got a you know significantly more species and yeah we can see whether we, we're, we're seeing relatively more um sightings or, or the sightings are tailing off here um uh, and basic pie charts of the the frequency of um uh, different species so again if we go to let's go to sometime in august so the week of the 23rd 23rd of august um the small tortoise shell was the most frequently reported sighting then speckled wood and so on down to gatekeeper this is only the top 10 the top 10 most frequently reported species so there will have been other species seen so if we if we set the week to star this is showing us the um the number of the 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 frequency over the whole year rather than a particular week so um it, the small tortoise shell has been the the most frequently uh, reported sighting over the whole year um then uh, speckled wood and peacock um we can actually look at um rather than just species we could look at uh, the frequency of particular sites or towns or, or even recorders so if we click um town so lancaster has had the most reported sightings over uh over the whole year than silverdale ah, and unfortunately um lancaster all uppercase is is treated differently from lancaster uh with with just a capital l so um yeah at the end of the year we we often kind of tidy up the sighting names for for consistency because not everyone uh call you know uses the exact same um uh wording for for particular places um so yeah so so here's the the flight times histogram that we saw or a version that we saw earlier um this is actually the data for the whole year but we can choose individual species um so peacock for example so we can see we you know we we mo the the largest proportion of sightings was seen in um uh, sort of early april or mid april um and yeah and again we can we can go back to previous years so this is um uh peacock sightings from 2019 um so we've we've actually got a later peak here than we did in 2021 um so so that's that um 
this 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 heat map shows us the um, uh, the 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 number of relative numbers of sightings for each species over the whole year. Um, so uh, yeah, if we if we set this, we we can order the species by uh, well, or order them chron chronologically. So if we do that. Um, I mean, for, for me, this is quite interesting that we, we we seem to get a kind of triangular shape. So the species that, that come out later in the year seem to tend to have shorter flight times than um, ones that start earlier in the year. It's it's almost like the the earlier species are sort of somehow stronger and 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 have longer, longer flight times. Um, uh, and yeah, this is this is another uh, yet another visualization. So this shows us the number of um, uh, relative proportion of uh, the top ten most frequently reported species over the whole year. Um, so here, small tortoise shell. So we can see that um, the the numbers of sightings tailed off here but that that probably corresponds to a week of poor weather because we can see that the overall numbers of sightings dropped significantly then as well um uh and um yeah so this this ridgeline plot shows us the uh, relative, it's a bit difficult to see what's happening here, but it shows us the relative number of sightings of different species. So, for example, we um, we have a big bump in 2019 for painted ladies. So that's showing that there's a higher proportion of sightings um, from that year of that species. So I think that had something to do with... Um, I think painted ladies might have some kind of like, is it a seven year cycle? Um, and yeah, so they, you know, we expected to, to see many that year. Um, but, you know, other things we can see is small tortoise shell is still a large proportion of the sightings um with wall brown in 2019 and 2020 we we didn't receive many sightings at all but this year we've actually received a few more um uh with white letter hair streak the last couple of years we we don't seem to have received many many sightings so this gives us kind of um a visualization of the more longer term trends over over multiple years um and then the final the final picture is um this is a, a, a map of um where where we've where, where we've received sightings reports from so the brightness of the square corresponds to uh, the number of sightings from that location so we can see that um you know, a, a, a large number of the sightings come from uh, come from Lancaster, and we all from around Lancaster, and we can um, we can choose the uh, the the size of the the square that we integrate over. So um, yeah, so tetrad. So that's that's two kilometers square. Uh, Monad is one one kilometer square. Um, and that hectare is 10 kilometers square, I think. Um, so, so yeah, so like, like all of these visualizations, the, uh, the, the data, the, the, the plot is, is dynamic. So it's, it's built up from the current, uh, sightings data, you know, when we click to, to visualize it. So as, as the years progress and as the year progresses, we see more and more sightings um, added to the to the visualizations, um, and and that's yeah, and and that's it. So um, it, it's it, it, it's easy to get to the visualization page from the uh, from the sightings page. We just click show data visualizations, and then. Um, you can choose from there which one you 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 may want to have a look at. Um, 
so so yeah so so that's that that's it so just a, a sort of brief introduction to the sightings page and the the visualizations i mean i'm i'm quite interested in in sort of data visualization as a as a um as a as a you know as a concept i think it's nice to be able to rather than view the data in a table if we can see something more visual then it it helps to 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 bring out trends and have a have a clearer understanding of what the data means rather than you know just looking at a table for for a particular month um so if anyone's got any suggestions for other um other ways that we can visualize the data i'd be very interested to to hear them and you know maybe maybe i can add um add support for that at some point soon um so yeah so that's so that's it so if there's if there's any questions um please let me know thank you very much mark um that was great um really useful Good. Um, I'm just having a look on the chat, and Chris Ambrose has asked, "What is ah. the what is the upload limit for a photo submitted to the sightings page?" Oh, that's an interesting question. Well, we um, when we when a, when a sighting is uploaded, we actually resample the image down. Um, so so you know if you if you uploaded a 10 megabyte image that might be uh, resampled to a few hundred kilobytes um but yeah in terms of the limit i i'm i'm not aware i mean we don't we don't specifically enforce one as far as I'm, i can remember um but the, the the will be a limit with the system probably of a few tens of megabytes so i would hope that um uh that uh that, that sort of any, any image that someone wanted to upload would work but if not then i may be able to um you know set things up so larger images work fine but i'm i'm not aware of of people having problems uploading images so yeah okay thank you chris does that answer your question you're muted <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have had a few uh, a few photographs rejected. I don't know why that was. Oh, really? Right. Okay. Well, I can I can have a look at that. Um, yeah, it's uh, I, I think I think uh, possibly the um, as well as the size of the image, um, the time of the upload might be um one of the limiting factors i think i think that the if the script takes longer than about 30 seconds then the connection will get dropped so depending on the size of the image or the speed of the internet connection that that might cause a problem as well so i'm sorry if there's if no there's been um problems uploading images uh yeah i can i can take a look at that and make it's sure that the, sorry I'm a need a cheaper phone, I think. Well, well yeah. Um, yeah, no I, I mean, that's it. Like, no, images, that's it. images on phones uh, are so high resolution nowadays oh, yeah. that, um, that, that, yes, I, I can imagine that, that that causes the website to have to work a bit harder. So, yeah. Okay, thank but, you. Has anybody right. else got, got anything but, they'd like to say? These reports actually. Um, replicated onto i record at all or? uh no i mean we we ask people not to su su submit duplicate sightings so um at the end of the year um the the site the, the 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 sightings from from the page go goes to laura um and and then you know from from there i'm i'm not actually sure what happens to them but but yeah i we we, we do ask that if not to submit duplicate sightings just to make sure that um yeah that that, that we don't we, we you know that that isn't an issue i haven't so, done that I, I just put them onto here if i get some yeah fine fine i mean my, my understanding is each branch the, the sightings for each branch that uses the system they go to the com uh, county recorder and then i guess there's some deduplication that that happens there um as well so so yeah are they looked at at all i noticed camberwell beauty before uh, 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 does anyone verify them 
Uh, it's a good question. So um, Yorkshire, Yorkshire branch uh, are, are quite careful about um, verifying the um, the sightings, whereas, for example, Cumbria is 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 less so. So I think the, with Cumbria, at least, we we go through the sightings at the end of the year, yeah. um, and, and 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 anything that that just seems incorrect um get gets removed but we i mean one of the ideas of the sightings page is to is to be quite open um and you know encourage people to to submit sightings so um yeah we we we, we yeah there's a certain amount of verification that's done but um yeah it's 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 perhaps not as rigorous as it may be that's fine. Thanks. Thanks, Val. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Everyone. Can I, I butt in on that? Yeah. Um, uh, both Peter Hardy, who looks after the Manchester area, and I do um, do quite, I think, decent verification. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I look at uh, for anything that's at all unusual. I'll go Google Earth it and see if it looks like the right sort of place for that thing to be. Um, Peter does the same. Um, if you get a really rare species, if someone says they've seen a, a pearl bordered fritillary in their back garden in Liverpool, it's it's not it's going to be deleted. Yeah. Great. And we do that for all the eye record stuff as well. Um, and views differ a bit on the big butterfly count because I my recorders on it tend to be people that I know and can trust already, but Peter's seem to be um, more random and he doesn't include, I think, any of the data that comes in on the big butterfly count in his data set. We are careful. And uh, that uh, Camberwell Beauty, which is um, in, with it, it's in Berry, I think. I think that's going to fall within Peter's remit. I haven't seen the grid reference for in detail yet, but um, it will be properly looked at. Of course, if there's a photo, it does help. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, I'd just like to comment, um, obviously with the pie chart and you, you highlighted the um, issue with Lancaster and Capitals and Lancaster and yes. lowercase. case. Yeah. Um, and then there's also under, because obviously you've got, is that the town and then you've got the sort of site name? Yes. Yeah. Everybody must use a different, word for their home uh, garden ab or... absolutely jane yeah yeah it, i mean this is this is a um this is a, a kind of an issue we have we have when you submit a sighting we have a drop down of so if you type l you know it'll come up with lancaster but <laughs> people still seem to put their own versions in rather than choosing one in the drop down so yeah it, it it's difficult um it's it's difficult sometimes. I mean, with with Cumbria, um, my my dad at the end of the year goes through all the sightings, and um, you can do find and replace in the supervisor modes to to kind of make the sightings more consistent. But um, yeah, that that's not something that I, I imagine that's something that happens later on in the process with um, with, with some branches. So. So yeah, it's it it's it's difficult. I I I used to try and be to try and stay on top of these types of things, but um, yeah, I I I have to admit I'm I'm less diligent than I used to be. But yeah, I think with upwards of two thousand records, I think it's a bit of a well, yeah. Ask, I mean, you, really. you, can, you you can find on find and replace on all records as so, a batch. Yeah, so it makes it a bit easier. But um, yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Thanks very much, Mark. That was very right. interesting. Well, thank, thanks, thanks for and you. Appreciate it. so much information hiding away there. Good. Let's just good. Let me use it a bit more now. Thank great, you. excellent. Great. Well, that, that, that's, that. that's what I'm hoping for. Good. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Thanks for your great. time and thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Great, thank you. I appreciate it.